In today's video, I'm going to show you a very basic introduction to watercoloring. This video is really for those who don't have any prior watercoloring experience and who just want to dive right in and try it out. When I first started paper crafting, I had no formal artistic training or background. I still don't actually, but it's still possible to get some really nice images with this really simple technique. So I'm just going to show you how I did these flowers. So the first thing I did is grab some watercolor paper. And then you want to make sure that the image you stamp is using a waterproof ink. So I use Jet, ba Jet Black Stays On. Now this stamped image comes from Stampin' Up's A Wash With Flowers stamp set. Now to get started, you really don't need a lot of different ink colors. I just used two. I had Real Red and Old Olive. And all you need to do to create your palette is to have your lid slightly open, give it a little squish, and then you'll see here you end up with some ink in the lid. You're also going to need an aqua painter, and if you don't have one of these, you can simply use a watercolor brush. And then it's helpful to have a paper towel to dab off any excess water. So as you can see, I filled the barrel of my aqua painter with water, and I'm just going to blot it a little bit on my paper towel and make sure it's clean. So the first thing you want to do is to create a little wash of color, and I'm just doing that by letting the water from my aqua painter flow out onto the lid of my um, ink pad and as you can see I'm creating a little pool of color and then I'm just going to take this color and you can see here that it's quite watery. Now I'm going to be cutting out this image and when you're just getting started I'd actually suggest that you probably just stick to images that you are going to be cutting out because in that way you don't have to worry too much about staying in the lines. Now the key when you're working within each area, so each petal, is that you don't want to stop filling the area, or you don't want to stop the movement of your watercolor brush until you finish the whole area. Because if you just partially color it, and then you go, go back to it after it's dried, you're more likely to end up with a streaky image. And as you can see, I'm just laying a very pale layer of my color. So even though I'm using real red, it's actually coming out as a very light pink. So I'm just making sure that I've colored in my entire image. You can see like that. Now, after that, what I'm doing is I'm simply going to continue layering on color. So each time I'm going to go back to my ink pad, pick up a little more color, and now, because what I want to do is I want it to be a little bit darker near the center and then to start to lighten as it moves into the petals, I'm picking up my ink, I'm starting at the very inside of the petal, and then I'm just working in a circular motion and letting the water pull up my color. As you can see, the petals above are still wet. So then I'm just kind of blending it into the petal above, and you can see as I'm doing this, how it's a little bit deeper in color near the bottom, and then as I move up the petal, it starts to lighten. So that's what lets you sort of fade a darker color into a lighter color without having distinct lines. And then I just keep going back, and I keep doing the same thing. Now a quick tip, if you ever, sometimes aqua painters can have a tendency um, for the water to gush out and if that ever happens and you end up with this pool of water on your project, you can take just the corner of a paper towel and you can start to, and you can dab up some of the water. Now of course when you are doing a technique like this, you do want to make sure that the watercolor paper that you are using is a very heavy weight because if it's too light what's going to happen is it's not going to be able to absorb as much water and your paper is going to start to buckle. Also when you're working with this much water it does have to be a watercolor paper. You cannot do this on regular Whisper White cardstock for example because it's just going to soak into the paper and you're going to get pilling of your paper. So you can see here now how I've got this darker color here and how it's fading into a much lighter color. And that's all there is to it. You just keep picking up more color, starting at the center of the petal and working your way in a circular motion 
to the pedal to the top of the pedal until it blends in. And again, the keys you want to remember as you're doing this. So as you pick up color, you start in the center. As you work your way up to the pedal, you want to make sure that you blend the entire pedal because if you stop halfway through, you're just going to end up with streak lines. So instead, this way, you're going to get a very beautiful transition of color from darker to light. Now, a final tip before I go is when you start to change colors, you have to make sure you clean your brush very well. So when you do that just by gently squeezing and blotting off the water until you see it runs clear. Then the second thing is you have to make sure that you let this portion of your image dry thoroughly. And if you're in a rush, you can always use a heat tool. Because if you just move in right now to picking up some green and coloring, because there's still dampness on the petal, the water, as, it, as the green gets close, the water that's tinted red from the petals is going to start pulling up the water that's tinted green. And then you're just going to end up with a big muddy mess around the center of your flower. And that's all there is to it. Well, I hope through this video today you've seen how easy it is to achieve a beautiful watercolored effect. You don't need a lot of tools, and you certainly don't need a lot of experience. And I encourage you to try this for yourself.